past 11 years, we went from, I forgot to tell you that, Nancy. We went from 1891 to 1188. And, and that 64 represents a number of members that were lost last rotary year. And something I always like to point out is, you know, from membership, our goal really isn't to get new members. It's to keep who we have. Because if you notice, if we kept who we have, we'd be at 1,800 members. You know, and, and we're always focusing on what, you know, who we don't have. We got to focus on who we have. And that's our strength. And everybody in business knows it's a lot easier to keep a customer than it is to get a new one. But we focus on getting our new ones all the time. And so I'm providing a lot of techniques that we could change that paradigm. And for those that don't know me, um, one of the reasons, you know, I say this before I'm repeating for those who've been here. In Rotary, we hear a lot of uh, presentations. I've been in Rotary 20 years and a lot of different leadership roles. And a lot of the presentations are theory and we get tired of theory. We want to know what actually works. And so one of the stories I like talking about is my club, Plano West Rotary. And Rotary likes using this as an example a lot. And as you can see, it's a typical Rotary club. And then 2021, was my first year as president and 2022 as well. Like um, some unfortunate ones, I was president for two years. We tripled our membership during COVID, which everybody knows was a rough time. That's usually a rotary excuse for failure, but it doesn't have to be. I'm a business coach by living. And the things I always, I, I coach CEOs on how to scale their company. And I'm really big in accountability. So anybody that knows me, I'm a no BS person. I just cut to the chase. That's what I do for a living. Shridhar as well. And I always tell my clients, winners never give excuses. <laughs> you know, People only give excuses when they don't accomplish their goal. Nobody ever says, oh yeah, we succeeded, but oh my gosh, this was everything went wrong. And so I always hate excuses. So COVID was not a reason for failure. It was just an excuse. And so what we're talking about, a lot of different techniques we were able to use to grow during the worst time in the world, actually. And also what I also point out is membership is, is not about growth. It's about representing your community. And when we talk about diversity, which is really important for Rotary, we, we looked at how we changed diversity for this club. The median age of 67 brought it down to median age of 50. You know, at, at one point we had, I think, seven different uh, college students in there. We had people that joined Rotary as soon as they turned 18. We were active in our youth services, RILA, Interact, and so on. And they also joined the Rotaract Club. So they were dual members, but they were Rotarians first. I'm really big on Rotarians first. Uh, we also diversified the club because we live in a diverse community. From There were two minorities, me. I was the first minority in the club. And I recruited a Pakistani friend. Ironically, I recruited him because his son I had mentored since he was in high school and he, his son joined our club when he graduated high school and I recruited his dad. Anybody that's been in zone leadership, Zane Carlson, who's always uh, the stage manager at Zone Institute, that's it. his father was the second minority in our club and Zane joined as well, still a member. Women, we went from three women to 52%. So like over 30 women, that was in a year. So it can be possible. And those that have heard me speak before, it was it was through service. We did 81 service projects that year. This club was a check writing club before that. So we had to change the paradigm and change the focus. And the focus was the focus of Rotary. And uh, this is our mission as an organization. A lot of Rotarians don't know that this is our mission statement. And it kind of tells you what our purpose is. We provide service to others. That's what a Rotary Club is. It's not we do programs or we have meetings or we do fundraisers. We provide service to others and we promote integrity, advanced world understanding, goodwill, and peace through our, through our fellowship. That's where the meetings come in of business professional community leaders. Unfortunately, over our uh, 117 years, people have converted it and they think we do fellowship. Oh, when we do service when we have time. No. We're a service organization. And when we focus on service, that's when we succeed. And that's actually when we make sense. Well, this is something, I have a presentation, I actually, RI likes me to do it. It's called, How to Grow a Rotary Club Like a Business. When I, I, don't, when I used to do a lot of club presentations, 
And this is actually a, a, a template, or I, I guess you could say a diagram that I use in business. And it, what it does is it compares a business to an airplane. So if you look, once again, I just am not used to running Zoom off of a laptop, so I can't find anything. So <laughs> find my little pointer. <laughs> so I can't, can you guys see my mouse here? Okay. So um, for an airplane, the cockpit, well, that represents leadership of a company. Well, for a rotary club, that's your board and committees, committee chairs. We have the body, which is overhead. For a rotary club, that's our club administration. We have our wings. This is important. This is the product of a company. Well, what's the product of a Rotary Club? Service projects and Rotary Foundation donations. Why Rotary? Why TRF? Because the point of TRF is to fund large service projects. If you ever notice that the Rotary Foundation does not give money, it's like what a lot of Rotary Clubs do. Rotary Foundation is not a check writing organization. The only checks it writes are for scholarships and peace centers, you know, which is scholarships provide that. Everything else, it's funding service projects, whether it's um, uh, DDF funds for districts or global grants. Rotary check writing is an abomination that Rotary clubs chose to do because it's a lot easier than doing a service project. But our product are service projects and Rotary Foundation so we can fund bigger service projects. Well, then if you look at public image, well, it's marketing or the right engine of a plane and public image is sales. That's where we're talking about. What is public image? It's sales and marketing. And I remember Diane said that. I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody ever really gets it. And it's also, um, uh, we have public relations as well. Unfortunately, Rotarians, because public image, they think public relations. So when we only use public image for public relations, Anybody that's ever been in a company, how many products do you sell with public relations? No, that's, you sell with sales and marketing. <laughs> public relations maintains the brand, provides education, but it's a slow drip. Sales and marketing gets it done. Well, to continue the analogy, what funds a Rotary Club? Well, membership dues, cash flow for, it, for a company. And then here in the corner, I added, and those that have heard me spoke before, our customers are our community, our citizens, and then our employees are our members when they join. And if you think about it, our employees are also our community. So that's an analogy of a business and a Rotary Club. And John Hugo, who is our CEO, what, chairman and general counsel for Rotary, he says we need to treat Rotary like a business, and he does. It's a $130 million business that he's in charge of with almost 900 employees globally. And if he doesn't do well, the board of directors will drop him, like every board will do with whoever's running their company. And he says, treat Rotary like a business. We often don't do that because we don't know what our product is. We don't know who our customers are. And here we're going to talk about using public image to sell our products to our, com our, our customer. What are our products? TRF and service projects. Who are our customers? The community. So let me continue our journey. So the point of this uh, webinar is how do we turn the community members into volunteers? Because of our product is service projects, we need them to serve on our service projects. And if we know from our other webinars, it's through those service projects that we get our members. We talked previously, how do you turn a volunteer into a club member? How do you take a club member and keep them in your club? Because remember, that's our, we lose more members than we gain in new members. That's why retention is our issue. And I think that was my last webinar last week, right? Wasn't it? There we go. When we talked about how you can treat volunteers and make them interested in being a part of Rotary, and more importantly, how do we treat us, Rotarians, so we stay in Rotary, so we don't lose so many? So that you guys could watch that recording. But now the question is, how do we get people to show up at our service projects? Because if we're going to grow, we can't do it by, let's go back to this picture. We have our products. And here's a question I will ask anybody can answer. 
uh, so you can turn your mics on. If you have a company and they have a product, let's just say widgets, that's a common product for a company. And the only people that buys their product are their employees, how successful will that company be? Anybody? Not. They won't be. Well, let's think of a Rotary Club. If our product is service projects and Rotary Foundation donations, and the only people that are serving and donating are our employees, hence the problem we have. Can you imagine if a Rotary Club fundraised for the foundation instead of for all these other nonprofits that we write checks to? How we have a great foundation, how much better it would be? The average Rotary Club fundraises for every other nonprofit more than they do for the Rotary Foundation. The Rotary Foundation is an afterthought. Big problem. Well, then if you think of our service projects, what do we usually do when we have a service project? It's all our members. Nobody from the community is there. Well, how are we gonna grow? That's not me. What just happened? Do you guys see that screen? I think somebody just screen, took over screen share. There we go. <laughs> that wasn't my desktop. <laughs> okay, so that's our problem we have. We have a company and our only customers are our club members. Well, we're not gonna grow. Oh, we aren't growing, are we? <laughs> and that's the paradigm shift that Rotary has me doing a lot of things trying to educate. So how do we turn community members into volunteers, which are customers into employees? So that's so what we're going to talk about is how Plano West Rotary was able to successfully do it. We started the year off with 21 members. We ended with 63. We're a Rotary Club that only did one service project. Um, everything else was fundraiser, so we could write checks. And the service project was picking up trash. Well, when I joined the club, because I was in Rotary 15 years in another club and I switched here. And nobody was, you know, very few club members showed up at the trash pickup. And I said, well, why don't we do this and that? Well, we, I thought about other service projects. Well, we can't get our members to do the one we do. So and I'm like, well, what about inviting other people? Like, oh, well, can we do that? <laughs> oh, yes, we can. <laughs> it's okay to have non rotarians at a service project. It blew everybody's minds away. And so that's what we started doing. Um, we started inviting other people to show up at the service projects. Novel concept. We always talk about sharing the gift of Rotary. Isn't that the gift of Rotary? It's not words, it's action. We always talk about sharing the gift of word, Rotary through words. Words don't get it done, and we all know that. If people sharing the gift of Rotary is letting them serve, so then they feel what Rotary is about, and then they want to join us. So on this customer journey of taking somebody in the community and introducing them to Rotary to eventually become a club member, it really starts off with getting them to volunteer. It, with our club, I always said, don't recruit people to Rotary. Don't do that. Don't ask people to join. Because we all know when somebody shows up at a Rotary event, and we've talked about this before, they're attacked by four or five people. Gotta join, gotta join, gotta join! Come to our meeting, and it's very off-putting. And as anybody's heard me speak, I compare joining Rotary to getting married. When you meet somebody, you don't say, marry me, marry me, marry me. You say, let's go on a date. Let's get to know each other. And that's how we get people included, getting to know them. Well, it's the same thing. So I discourage me. And those that may not know, um, in 2021, we were the fastest growing Rotary Club in North America, actually all the North, South and Canada, America with that growth we had. And we did that by not asking people to join Rotary. We asked them to join our service projects. I have personally recruited 50 people on Rotary. I'm in the membership society. And I only did that. It was really easy. I waited till I saw somebody at a, a service project two or three times and then say, hey, have you ever thought about joining Rotary? And they always say, oh, I'm too busy. I'm like, but you're already doing it. I'm like, what do you mean? You're at a service project. That's what Rotary is about. They're like, what about the meetings? Don't worry about the meetings. That's where we, that's just networking, but we really need you to serve. Well, that's really appealing to people. And so I would just tell our club members, 
just bring them to the service projects. And so let's talk about our customer journey, how we use public image, which is sales and marketing, to get our customers, the community, to show up at our service projects, which are our product. And I know you guys are having your first Thursday, and it's going to talk about the different ways of utilizing social media. Well, that's it. Isn't that how companies do their sales and marketing through social media these days? We've got Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google My Business, Instagram, and then there's this concept called SEO, search engine optimization. Is anybody familiar with like search engine optimization? Show of hands. Companies, organizations, everybody uses it, right? Now I want to see a show of hands. How many Rotary Clubs use it? One. That's why most people don't know about Rotary Clubs. This is like Business 101, we, we take advantage of all the media outlets. We were, we were actually publishing three times a week on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google My Business, and Instagram. And then we had an SEO company, which also did the postings, did all the backlinks, did our, just everything that a company would do about our Rotary Club. Now, we're in Plano, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas, a 300,000 person city. We have six Rotary Clubs in our business, in our city. When someone looks for Rotary in Plano, where do they go? Us, because we dominate the internet in terms of Rotary, especially Rotary in Plano. Why? By utilizing the common tools that every business uses in the world that's most successful and it's inexpensive. Our club dues are 200 a year. We're a poor club. Anybody, a Christian saying is, you have time, talents, and treasures. And as anybody who's been a club president, every nonprofit's hitting you up for money. And I tell them, we have time and talent. We have no treasure. And the, the only treasure we have, we give to the Rotary Foundation. We were number one in the district for both years for a per capita giving to the Rotary Foundation. Now, Let's talk about how we utilize all these different standard sales and marketing techniques, the customer journey. So when somebody finds up our upcoming events, the majority of our events are service projects because we are obviously doing, uh, what is that? 81 divided by 12, that's like six, six a month. And anybody's heard me speak, they're all small. They weren't mega. If you, Yes. Well, any, well, it depends on if your president's now. You heard when I was at Midwest Pets, you know, and I said, if you have to have a committee, it's too big. We want small, fun, and impactful. That's a service project. So when we talk about upcoming events, that's what we're talking about. But this is how they found out about us. We were paying a company. Granted, they were out of India. You're not going to get this price for an American company, an SEO firm that posted three times a week on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Google My Business, and LinkedIn about what? Our service projects. And this is an example of what they would post. And this is the same company that did our SEO, 40 bucks a month. When a poor club can afford that, everybody else can, because our dues are 200 a year is like the bare minimum. It takes 150 just to be in a, <laughs> be, be a Rotarian when you look at um, RI dues plus district dues. But here's an example, short and sweet. This is our, Sales, anybody that knows when you've got a sales message, you've got to be to the point and you have to have a call to action, right? That's business 101. Well, let's look at this. It's not too late to join us. Keep our community clean. Join us as we clean up Avenue K on, in Plano, Saturday, March 12th at 9 a.m. Click this link. And that link is a bit.ly that goes to our website where they can sign up. And we have it nice, people see it, boom. So. What is somebody in the public? Hey, do I want to help clean up? Do I care about the environment? Oh, yeah, click this link. I get to do it. Here's another example. Make a lasting impact on those around you by volunteering to deliver furniture to those in need. To learn more, click this link. Here, oh, this one, one of our, one of our webinars was talking about partnering with other organizations. Here we partner with the city of Plano. Every city has a trash pickup program. Every Rotary Club should be a part of it. That's a no-brainer. Here, oh my gosh, whose district is this out of? This is out of your district. I'm sorry, the story. This is a nonprofit called Bed Start. 
and they deliver furniture for those in need. A lot of times it's uh, refugees, because as you know, refugees come in empty handed. And, and so we partner with them, I think twice a month, and we just bring out volunteers to deliver the furniture. Well, the story is our point of contact, gosh, I, I should have looked this up. He, he is from Wisconsin. And I remember when we had him speak to our club, he had in his bio that his dad was a Rotarian. And so I called Dave and Dave um, called the, contacted the club. I wish I, I wish Dave was here. See, shame on your district governor for not being here. <laughs> but Julia's here, yay. <laughs> well, Dave contacted the club and the club got a club member that knew his father, who was deceased, to show up at our meeting. It was a Zoom thing. And he introduced our speaker. Our speaker was in tears. He just couldn't believe it. And he talked about his father. And he said his mother, who's alive, was so excited. It was just, they were just really um, honored that Rotary still remembered him, you know, after he was deceased. But anyway, gosh, I wish I had that club name. Um, but it, Another example of this is what we're selling. We're selling our service projects and we give people a call to action. Here's another one. We partnered with, who is this? Oh, the school district. The Plano West Rotary Club is organizing a meal drive through at Armstrong Middle School. Join us to hand out fresh, healthy meals to ISD families in need. They click a link. Ooh. What are we selling? The service projects. Who can sign up? Anybody. So we would propagate this not just on our social media but this is the key our number one sales channel was facebook but it was not just general facebook it was facebook groups so we had members that joined all these facebook groups that were tied to either nonprofits or they were tied to other there's a lot of facebook groups for volunteering that just expand out so they would when the club would publish out these, which remember we're doing this three times a week, they would just share it to all these groups. So we just have it blanketed this Dallas. So we would have people driving in from different parts of Dallas to our suburb to volunteer on our service projects because they wanted to help those in need. You notice we're not talking about joining Rotary or anything or attending a meeting because we know how successful it is when you ask people who attend a meeting. Not very, people are too busy, but everybody finds time to help, especially when it's on the weekend and they could bring their family and friends. So this was the first point of the customer journey. This is social media. I think this is, this is what? Is this Facebook? Yeah, this is Facebook, but they all look the same on Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram and Google My Business. Well, then when they click that link, this is where they go to. Right? Is 6220 a club runner or a DAC DB district? DAC DB. Okay. Well, DAC DB does the same. You could create a page. We're a club runner district here. Um, you could create a page for an event. So when they click that link from social media, it goes to this page, which was created representing the event. This particular event was an international festival. So then we give more details. We also talk about the waiver. You notice in red. I talked about that before. Anybody that's ever volunteered for other nonprofits, they always make you sign a release of way, a release of liability form. So that way, if you get hurt, if you sue them, you already signed a form saying you would it. Rotary Club, our insurance, AIG in America, they highly recommend we do the same. 99% of Rotary Clubs don't. And even a club member, they could get hurt and sue your Rotary Club in your district and RI. We're supposed to have these signed for everybody that shows up at an event for Rotary. Anybody's in business or anybody's with another nonprofit, you know how important they are. So I'm begging you to do that as well. So you and your club and your district don't get sued. So anyway, we require it um, for all our projects. Either they sign up, do it electronically ahead of time, and then we have a registration team that's on site to make sure either we have it or they sign it. And then we give the ability of just clicking. And this is on your DAC DB, you know, on the search. And we all, now we do do a pitch here. Hey, too busy to volunteer? Donate. If they click it, they get to donate to the Rotary Foundation. So this is what they see. So they see it on social media. They click a link. 
And then you're going to our webpage, which talks about the event. So this is something anybody could do. So I would like to know, and everybody who's been with me knows I pick on everybody here. What does your club do right now to tell people about your service projects? Do we have any volunteers? So we primarily use our club's Facebook page. Um, I like the idea of, of connecting with groups and, and seeing if there's any options there. And you guys have next door where you're at? Yes? You don't have next door for connecting all neighborhoods? Okay, I see some yes. Is anybody, is next door, is it pretty toxic here? It is pretty toxic in Texas. Well, it's amazing. When you post service projects on next door, there's no negativity. <laughs> it's not political, it's not controversial. You just get a lot of people that join. And that's another. Facebook group is one. Send your service projects to next door. Now, if you try to get them to join Rotary, well, then you're going to have the negativity. But just say, help people. Nobody can complain about helping people. What is any, any other club? And what do you, what does your club do to talk about your service projects? Megs. Hi, good morning from the Philippines. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm from the Philippines. This is Trade 50. And um, thank, thank you, you for, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. In my club in the Philippines, we use the local radio station and we have a memorandum of agreement with the local TV station. And then we use Facebook a lot. Fantastic. Man, we can't afford that. <laughs> Well, That's here awesome. in the local, in the locality, we get free with the media because I'm also part of the press club and we try to use our influence for good. And uh, they cool. get, they give us it for free. So we're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other volunteers, what does your club do to let your community know about your service projects? We, uh, we have been running a annual uh, event called Rhythms of the World in collaboration with uh, some of the organizations. For the last four years, every year, I have gone on TV and also the radio, and we get the anchors to come and be the MCs. What it does is uh, you can get into their news feed also. So Rotary is uh, prominently featured in those interviews and the news feeds. Fantastic. Thank you, Sridhar. Any, uh, anybody else? What does your club do? Uh, this Dennis, uh, Dennis. Mae West. Um, what we've done in the past successfully is model something which everybody in the community can do. For example, during the pandemic, businesses were hurting because nobody showed up. We said, well, buy a gift card. And we got the paid newspaper and the television to say, hey, that's what they're doing. Everybody can do this. A few years ago, there was a construction project on a busy high, uh, street and the businesses were hurting. So we got one of our more photogenic people standing on the corner and we got the television and we say, shop the merchants on Mason Street. Everybody can do this. And so it wasn't, now, I, nobody that we know of joined, but we got people on television thanking us. That's so good. You're saying you got it on television. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Dennis. Anybody else? What, what did you do to get your server? Once again, how do we get the community? Because if we only sell our products to ourselves, we're not going to succeed. So how do we get our customers, the community, to know about our service projects? Anybody else? Okay, well, let me change the question. What idea do you have of how an existing service project that your club is doing, what can you do differently to get members of the community to show up? Come on, folks. Hi again. Diane. Oh, wait, who? Somebody who hasn't spoken already. Who? Who is it? Sorry, it's Megs again. You were asking about the idea. 
Yeah, um, I'm sorry, Megs. I'm trying to make sure I get everybody so I don't want people <laughs> speaking twice. I'm sorry. I want somebody who hasn't spoke to tell us what your club could do to advertise an existing service project to your community. I just don't know. I gave some ideas, Diane. Shy Hi, Diane. Diane. <laughs> yeah, Shy. I think that our club probably could do several things. One of them is do some PSAs with our local radio stations and our television <laughs> networks about what we do. Our a project we're coming up. Um, and also coordinate with other nonprofits to help them as we help each other promote events being associated with other nonprofits. Very good. This is what I find when I talk to different districts in our zone pair. The problem is clubs don't do service projects. <laughs> they have meetings and they do fundraisers. And the challenge is, if you don't have a product to sell, then it's hard to sell. And so that's why the whole, as you know, Dave, what is his theme for this year? Grow Rotary through service. So it starts with having those service projects. Then you can talk to people about them and they show up. Well, let me go and continue with our customer journey. Let me get this screen share going. So. As I talked about, they hit social media, they click a link because they like the project and they get the project page. Well, let's look at the back end a bit. The key is, as I just mentioned, you have to have service projects. And so our club was doing six service projects a month and they're all small. Here is a mill drive through partnership with the school district. You guys can see all this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here is an HFA. This is with the city of Plano and it was celebrating cultural diversity, specifically the Asian uh, culture. And so that we we're part of that. Another meal drive through delivering furniture, environmental, meal drive through meal drive through delivering furniture. So you notice a pattern here? It wasn't that we had to create lots of different types. We just looked for service projects that were repeatable, sustainable projects. Unfortunately, we never run out of trash. So we have to pick up, we actually, you commit to the city, you're gonna do that every other month. Boom, well, that's six times a year. The school district, they have their own schedule. They were doing three food drives every month. Well, we volunteered to bring the labor for that. Well, that's three different service projects every month. Um, then we have these Asia Fest, what's going on? This delivering furniture, we we're doing once a month. So we were doing the same project but over and over again. Does that diminish its impact? No, it just means we're part of the continuing solution going on because it's a sustainable project that's already funded by somebody else. We're just providing the labor. Every city has these type of things that you can work on because any that, anybody that's been part of a global grant, sustainability is key. It's not a one and done. You will not get your global grant approved. It's got to be a sustainable, continually involved with the community. Well, that's what these were doing. And so this is actually a service project list that's in our, in our website. When somebody comes to our website, this is like the, the header of the website. And one, well, I guess talk a little bit about website. Anybody knows in business, this is what you would call the, a, a hero uh, website, which is a web design frame. And what it does is the point of this website is to speak to our customer. Most Rotary Club's websites speak to who? Anybody want to tell me? Our members. Exactly. So nobody cares about it but your members. This is speaking to our public. And when somebody looks at this, who is it speaking to? Somebody who wants to serve in their community. This is what else was important. When, I, when we first put the design together, I did the wireframe, which is what it's called when you design a website. And I paid somebody to do this on Club Runner, which is a horrible kludgy web thing. But hey, the problem was we had a club with a bunch of old white men. Well, when you have marketing, you wanna target who your customer is. Well, we needed diversity. So we had to target what we weren't. If we're a bunch of old white men, we needed to target specifically young minority women, that was our ideal. 
And then also you have other things. That doesn't mean if you're an old white man, we're not going to accept you, you know, but we want to target what we weren't because we're trying to diversify. Well, in the beginning, we had no, all our pictures were old white men. <laughs> so I went to um, um, Brand Central and they have lots of stock photos. I grabbed stock photos of people that we wanted to join our club. So when someone would look at our website, they would see people that look like them that are doing what they wanna do, serve the community. Well, after we finally diversified, then we started able to use real pictures. And so then we updated the website. But in the beginning, remember we were 21 members, 18 men, median age 67. <laughs> You know, we were we were the hundred percent normal old white man club, but our public image, our website, our view to the world needed to be something that looked inclusive and that made people want to show up. So here, people that wanted to serve your community. You also notice it's very properly branded. John Hugo complimented our website. We had him speak at our club, Zoom speak. He's like, you have the perfect website because we don't, most websites are wonky as we know. Perfect branded. Well, this is the key. We had um, call to action is important. Anybody that's involved in website and business, you got to give people something to do. Otherwise, if you don't give them anything to do, it's a waste of everybody's time. Our call to action, if you looked at the entire website, and for, it's been changed, so it's not as, precise as it was, but we had fine service projects, fine service projects, three more times. On our front page, fine service projects was every section. So when somebody looks at our website, what do you think they're gonna press? Fine service projects. And when they press that, they go to this page. So they see our homepage, they press fine service projects because that's what our SEO is sending them to either talking about our immediate projects or overall service, community volunteering. They hit our website. They click a button that says find service projects. And what do they see? Wow, look at all these service projects. And we always had our projects pre-planned. And it was easy because they were all consecutive. Organizations know when they're going to have their service projects planned. So we put it up there. So what do you think when we have our target market, a young minority woman, hits this button and she sees this. Does anybody tell me what do you think she's gonna do? Anybody? Nobody can figure it out? Come on, I'm not gonna move until somebody speaks. <laughs> well, she, she's gonna click on one of these links and uh, just dive in a little bit deeper, learn a little exactly. learn more about it. Isn't that what sales and marketing is about? You want to let people know about the product that you're selling and you want to make it easy for them to buy it. So she clicks that and what does she get? She gets that, it goes there. So one, I, I showed you the journey from social media, which gets her here. This is the journey when somebody sees our website. They go here, they click it, they see all this big list, they pick the one they want, and then they see a page like this. So, Everything's leading back to, if you use website terminology, our landing page for our product. Our landing page for our product is the service project that that person got to. So now what happens when they click the link on the landing page? Because if you remember, here, click the sign up, click the sign up, and there's a lot of times another one, but basically they're gonna click the sign up. When they click it, they get this. Anybody ever heard of Sign Up Genius? Years ago, I used to be in charge of Interact for our district. And I personally worked with all the presidents of the, we had, I think it was like over 50 Interact clubs. And, and I was really big on getting the high schoolers to run the event. So I didn't have Rotarian volunteers. I had Interact volunteers. And they're the ones that told me about Sign Up Genius because we were team meeting talking about this now. So we'll use the sign-up genius to get people to sign up. I'm like, what is that? Sure, do it. <laughs> it's like, and so that's what I learned about sign-up genius. It's free and they click it and you just design it. And it gives people the ability to sign it up for a service project. Then what's really cool about sign-up genius, and one, it's free. Two, it does automatic 
reminders. It'll send them emails based on when the project is and everything. So you don't have to do all that brain damage because we know that's a pain in the butt, especially if you're doing six service projects a month. <laughs> you know, that, that becomes an administrative nightmare. So here we're using a free tool that when people sign up, they're reminded of the service project. And here it gives them all the details. Now, we also had our service project team leader, their responsibility was to be in charge of the individual project. We have a registration team, a dedicated, my wife happens to be, um, she's actually chair of three different committees and that's one that she's committed. And keep in mind, she works 60 hours a week. I have a busy wife. She has joined Rotary two and a half years ago took her 15 years of me being in it to join. She has never been to a club meeting in person. Why? She works for a living. <laughs> she would get fired if she took two and a half hours off to drive and go to it. But she's very active in our club, chair of three committees. One of it is the registration committee. And their job is to handle the people that sign up for our club. One, they make sure that they have, have a signed waiver. And two, they make sure they get a t-shirt because we provide all our volunteers a t-shirt and then, and they coordinate with the team leader of the project and, and sometimes, and they show up on site for people that, you know, walk-ins as we call it, people that didn't do all the online stuff, but they just showed up. Well, that's what the registration team does and they support all our different projects. So we got all these people through a sign up genius, which is free. That's automatically reminded they show up. We have a registration team that, answers their questions, because people always have questions, even though they're supposed to go to the project leader whose information is in here, and they make sure the volunteers know what they're doing. And then this is, if you type in signupgenius.com, this is what it looks like. So I encourage you to go explore. I think they even have, well, it's free, but you can pay. We pay, because that way you can have multiple logins and some added features, but you could get a, we, the first year we didn't pay. Uh, we just used a free version. So a lot of times DACDB and Club Runner, they have this kind of stuff built in. I don't know about DACDB, but Club Runner, it's kludgy and it's very expensive. So we don't use the Club Runner version. It's easier to just use something that's free. <laughs> it works well. So let's talk about what you guys can do. I kind of showed the, I'm not done, but the customer journey to the point of getting to the project. How can you guys um, maybe change a club process or what are you doing when somebody who's not a member of your club wants to sign up? Anybody want to share? So Alex, this is Nancy. Um, so I think the struggle that our club has had and maybe Maybe, um, and I'm a little bit removed. I, I haven't been president in a few years, but we hired an external um, vendor to create our website. And then what happened is the people who were involved initially um, moved on and weren't involved anymore. And then other people needed to be involved with this company to, so it made it really difficult to update our website and anything on the website. And they wanted money to update it, right, too. And they wanted money. And so anytime we want to add something, you know, somebody needs to know how to do it. It's that administrator function. Um, and that that has that's really been a struggle for, for a few years. Then why can't you just don't use them anymore and use the DACDB version? Um, that's maybe in progress. I'm I'm not that close anymore to our club, you know, board to know if that's happening. Um, but yeah, it's. I've and, seen and, other clubs do that because I get to work with, you know, all. What do we have? Twenty three districts, twelve hundred clubs in our zone pair. Some clubs and some districts do it, and they all have the same outcome that you do. It ends up. It's great the first year, but it's not sustainable. And that's what's nice about DACDB and Club Runner. One, they're made for Rotary. Two, they're sustainable and they're used and they make it nonprofit affordable as opposed to for-profit companies. Sridhar, I see you stretching. Yeah, a few years ago, there was a presentation at the PECS and this young Rotarian suggested 
we could always ha have an intern from the local technical college. The cost will be minimal and they want the internship for experience and they can very well manage the website. And it so happens out of the 39 clubs, only one club took that suggestion and uh, it worked for some time. But I think that may be something that we want to look at either high school intern or, you know, tech uh, intern. For them, it is both experience and we are talking not about the design itself, but the maintenance. The challenge with that is it's not sustainable because they're only going to be in that role for maybe a year and then you get what you pay for. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you got a volunteer and that's and that's kind of uh, what her her thing was, they had a great plan, but then it didn't become sustainable in years later. And so that's kind of everybody throws out that intern idea, but that only works until they graduate or they decide they want to get a real job. Where are we at? We got a half, we have 15 minutes left, right? Yep. And Alex, there's a couple of comments we probably want to make sure we call out. Well, let me, what I'm going to show might answer some questions for people. My next slide. What I wanted to provide were some tools people can use that your club might use. One, obviously a website, which we're just talking about. And I really encourage people to try to use something, like imagine what's going to happen in 10 years when you're no longer president. What is your club going to do? And to think towards the future, because that's what a company would do, right? You don't implement a solution for that year. You implement it so it's sustainable. So think of how you're going to do your website. And if you don't want it, like I admit, it, Club Run or DACDB, they're kludgy, but they're also cheap. <laughs> and they they usually provide, a because honestly, DACDB and Club Runner, their main purpose is not to be a website. They're really a CRM. It's the back end and where the power comes in. Then they give you this website capability really cheap. Because yeah, it's a little add-on for them. And so somebody can have a for-profit website like what your club is doing, and they can still connect up to DACDB as a CRM. And then that gives you all the flow-throughs to your district. And there's a lot that those do in the back end. But having a website is critical. And having and then your website, have a website service project page, like what I showed. So like any company, if you have a you have a product list, you have products which is, should be service. Well, you want to have them planned in advance because that's what companies do. So people can see your offering and plan for it. And that requires that your club plans in advance. Have a volunteer sign up. I had gave the example of signupgenius.com. It's free, but I know DACDB has an add-on you could pay. So if you just want to spend money, you can. But there's other volunteer sign-up applications out there. Sign Up Genius doesn't own the market. It's just a lot of people know it, and it is free. I like free. Especially if anybody's been in Rotary, we like free, right? Social media accounts. Next Thursday, is it next Thursday? Yes, next Thursday. You guys will learn how to use social media for your club. But this is the difference. We always talk about using social media, public image afterwards. You can't sell a product after. You got to let people know ahead of time. So that's why this webinar is using public image to get people to show, using it before your event, before your service project. That's the key. Plan, be proactive, and let people know about it. You can still have an after part, but really all you're doing is bragging. Well, if you have a company that all their marketing is bragging about their products, are you going to buy it? No. <laughs> that doesn't speak to our client. People want to know what are we doing. That's service. They don't want to hear what we have done. They want to hear what we are doing. We have been bragging about Rotary for years, and our numbers do not demonstrate success in that methodology. And another, I'm big on cliches. If you know, Definition of insanity is what? Anybody tell me? Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Our fourth action on the Rotary Strategic Plan is what? 
the ability to adapt. That means doing things differently. We are, I've been in Rotary 20 years. We don't want to change. We want to do things the way we used to do it. The problem is, as we looked at that chart for this district, 11 years, those results have not panned out to be successful. That's why Dave, your district governor, has put this webinar series to introduce not only a different way of doing it, but a proven successful way that's doing it that's fully supported by Rotary International. That is my ICA role. I do this across all the districts, do it at pets, district conferences, and so on, trying to beg people to do things differently. Next, oh, I didn't mention it, but all this is done via electronics. We're getting emails. And I think one of our webinars, uh, somebody pointed out, maybe it was even Dave, I'm supposed to be roasting him and I'm kind of giving him too many compliments. We got to erase all this compliments I'm giving him. <laughs> I told him I was going to roast him one because he wasn't here. But do something with those. This is what our club does. Keep in mind, we had zero at the beginning of 20 volunteers. We now have over 850 names in our database from people oh. that have volunteered over the last two years. And we collected it by them signing up for service projects. And we, we use Active Campaign, which is, you know, Constant Contact, Active Campaign, MailChimp, the email programs. And we send out a monthly blast to our 880 volunteers. And only 60 of them are club members. The majority of our volunteers are not Rotarians. And what are we doing? We're not pitching meetings. We're not, we're not even talking about uh, uh, donating to the Rotary Foundation. We are strictly talking about our upcoming service projects for that next month. It goes out on the first of the month and it talks about the service projects for the next 30 days. And what does it have? A nice little picture, a description, and they could click a link and they go to that landing page about the service projects. And so every time somebody signs up, they're in our list. And as you guys know, as I talked before, when we do our, our, our release of liability form, we have two sections that we added to it. One that gives us the ability of emailing them. Anybody knows in business, you need to do that or you could get sued. <laughs> There's a fine. I think it's an FTC fine if you email somebody without their permission. And we also get their permission to use their likeness because you have to do that as well. So when they sign our waiver, which they have to do to participate in our service project, we can use their pictures and we can send them emails, and we do. <laughs> now they can opt out, but so that's the service project. And we <clears throat> hired this agency through Upwork.com. Has anybody ever heard of Upwork.com? Anybody who's in small business? It is all business. It is a global hiring platform that global, meaning people from all over the world are part of it. And you just put out a job and people sign up for it, but it's very structured and organized. My company, I've been using it probably 15 years now. I've had my company 20 years. And I posted um, what we wanted, uh, very specific, the company, and I $40 a month is what we were paying. For them to post three times a week on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google My Business, and what else? There should be another one, and do our SEO, 40 bucks a month. That's cheap. Now, they were based out of India. And the benefit of that is, as Sridhar could tell us, the, you can't compete. <laughs> to get an American company to do that, they're going to charge you like 500 bucks a month. And so a lot of times, um, depending on, especially if it's electronic, you're going to be able to get providers out of India and the Philippines, as a matter of fact, are the countries that really compete well. And the ours happen to be out of India. And it just so happened our sales rep was a Rotarian, as a matter of, and actually a third generation Rotarian. And then you got to have a public image chair. Not all clubs have a public image chair, but a public image chair that's willing to do things differently. So those were the tools that you could take a picture of this if you want, um, that we just used. And, but I kind of consider that to be the, every club that utilizes these will, very easily, very inexpensively, be able to let their community know about their projects. And keep in mind, our club dues are 200 bucks a year, and we're able to do all that and do all that growth. 
So with that, what I'm going to do is always like I start off with our mission, I end with our vision. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, in ourselves. More Rotarians need to know what our mission and what our vision is so it helps keep us focused. Because as we know, that becomes a guiding light for any organization. So what I want to do is what I did before, talk about what people have learned, and then I'm going to, that's me, and then we'll go into questions. So I'm going to drop, there are new people. If you want to take a picture of this, th these are the webinars we did. The first one was partner with nonprofits. Company Care last week, this is Invite the Public. That's me, these are my rotary roles. Basically just help, help clubs grow using service. Here's my email, here's my phone number. So let's talk about what we've learned and we could throw in some questions too. And we have, how long do we have, Nancy? It's 8.08 now. Um, I think we're on until 8.30, but we don't, you know, what, whatever, whatever works. Well, don't you usually have like five minutes at the end for you to talk about stuff? Yes. So we've got 20 or what, 15 minutes. Yes. So I would like to talk about um, what we have learned. What, more importantly, what have you learned today that you could take to your club to be effective on getting non-club members to show up at your service projects? Well, I think one of the things I learned is that our website must be interactive. It's not just a bag of stuff that our members can dip into. It has to be two-sided. It has to be an opportunity for non-members to get into it and find out what's going on and what they like. I would guess that most of our club's websites are guarded like a safe. They don't want, they're afraid that people are going to, uh, the public is going to know about our personal lives or that sort of stuff. I think we need a whole paradigm shift in terms of what a website is. It's to face the community and not to serve our membership. Thank you, Dennis. You took my words right out of my mouth. Thank you. I could, I could, um, can you hear me? Perfectly. I, I can uh, um, expand on Dennis's comment. I, I, I believe our websites are not publicly known. And so having all this information that people could sign up on our websites is not, that's only the first step. The second step is to get our websites out there so that the community sees it. Which and is that, what could sharing, does. that could be sharing with other, I mean, the best thing would be just sharing it with other community groups. True, and that's what search engine optimization does. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Billion websites out there, and that's how you get people to see it that uh, meet that criteria. And ours was people that were interested in service. Mm -hmm. So exactly, Julia, and that's actually most companies spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to do that. Eric, your hand is up, and you're actually the king of all of this, the king of community service for the district. Oh, boy, am I in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least so, you're here, unlike the district governor, right, Julia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No, I, I, I was just going to say that. It, Eric. Um, what, what I, I feel like I've, I've learned um, is we, we've been, we've got to really kind of do our service. We got to turn our service project approach on its head. Um, we, we go out there and we, we do a number of service projects, um, and then we post about it after it happened. Um, you know, so it, it is exactly what you talked about, Alex, in terms of we, we post it for ourselves to a certain extent. And, and so what I really learned is that I need to go to my club and talk about, you know, we, we, we picked the service projects to get involved in. Now, let's think about how we get involved in inviting members of the community to, to join us, you know, how we can be the ones with the conduit to get these folks into these service projects. I love it, Eric. You'll be the ambassador. <laughs> we had somebody speak up there. 
the bark. <laughs> Anybody else? Katie, you look like so deep in thought right now. You're just, I see your wheels turning big time. I can't let you get away with not saying anything. I think one of the things that we need to do is really reevaluate what products and services are available to us through Rotary already. I know we aren't using um, a lot of a lot of the tools that are available to us. We're also going through a huge rebrand as well, looking at a company to help us with our website and upgrading all of our social media as well. So I think we're kind of in research and development phase right now, but we've done the same thing. We haven't really extended our opportunities to the public. So I'm going to be posting one of our service projects on LinkedIn today or tomorrow. But again, it's already happened. So yeah, we have to reverse that as well. So well, do you have one coming up that you can post on LinkedIn? I don't think so. We've got our, we have fundraisers. Those are our, we have two big fundraisers coming up. So that's going to flood our social media, I think. But no, I don't think we have any service projects in the near future. It sounds yeah. like that's a good plan for your club. The company's got to have products if they're going to sell it. Anybody else? Diane, your mic is open. Oh, she's shy. Um, so I'm having to drag uh, around Katie, this entire webinar. Yeah. When Katie said we don't have a service project, uh, we are going to be having one in March 14th where we will be making dinner for the Altrusa House, the people that uh, stay at the Altrusa House here in Green Bay are um, family and friends of people who are in the hospitals in the ICU unit where they're uh, from, usually they're from town and they uh, stay at the Altrusa House. Is this Altrusa, the women's service organization? Is that same Altrusa? It's the one on uh, Webster. Well, there's a global organization called Altrusa. It used to be women who couldn't join Rotary, they joined Altrusa. No. It's not the same? No. Oh. No. This, is a I'm like, wow. this is a service group that is dedicated specifically to the family and friends of people who are hospitalized for long periods of time. Or even so what you need to do is create your project so other people could volunteer and put that on your social media. March, that's only what? It's yeah, Diane. Diane, ask our club, our Green Bay Rotary Club. I'd love to do it. Okay, I'll talk we to don't need you, Julia. You're already in Rotary. We want non-Rotarians. No, oh, no, no. well, I can. I have friends. <laughs> yes, we got to bring. Remember, we talked earlier. If we fill it up with Rotarians, we're not going to get anybody to join. We can't have our employees buy our products. We got to get non-employees to buy the product. That's the only way we're going to grow. We got to show Rotary to people that aren't already in it. Anybody else, do you have a, what have you learned as well? That's what we're doing, learning for another 10 minutes and questions. So um, I'm, I'm going back sure. to the first, yeah, hi. I'm going back to the first webinar and just, you know, I think what I really learned from that one is reaching out to like the school system and just groups that we haven't thought about before um, to see if there's opportunities for us to better cooperate. And then I guarantee um, you, your school system needs so much help. <laughs> right. And with, with uh, that Thursday session coming up next week, I want to make sure the person in our club that's responsible for our public image and communications and, and our uh, websites that she, she attends. The big paradigm shift is getting Rotarians to think of public image before you do something. Mm -hmm. So we could get people to show up. And yeah. that's the key. Plan, you know, if it's planned in advance, create an, the ability for people aren't in your club to sign up. A lot of times Rotary Clubs have a paper sign up and they pass it at a meeting. Well, that doesn't do anybody good if they're not at the meeting. You know, that's why the sign up genius, the electronic, which you'd be amazed. Once you convert to electronic, you're not going to do the paper anymore because everything's all organized. Then you end up using that for your club meetings. Oh, everybody just use a sign-up genius. Well, then once you have it electronic, then you can have anybody in the community sign up. I know we have, we have so many politicians that sign up for our service projects. I don't know if it's because they want to be known to be service, but I don't care. They're signing up. 
<laughs> they want to be out there with the community and we give them a, a, a venue to do that. That's very acceptable regardless of the party. Awesome. Anybody else, any learning? Well, you know, Sharon, you brought up a good point. This is the final one. Um, the first one was partnering with nonprofits, and that includes, I, I include municipalities as well, cities and school districts. The second one was, what was it? Last week, I forgot. Comfort and care. Oh, and care. How to be nice to people. <laughs> yes. So we, so they don't leave Rotary. I mean, we laugh, but the number one reason why people leave Rotary is the club experience. They did not feel comfortable. And I know, Julia, you just had that shoved down your throat at IA <laughs> because Gordon and Stephanie, that's their mission as well. And comfort and care was Jennifer Jones's. We, you're going to see, at least for those three, meaning our international presidents, the club experience is going to be a major focus. And that's really to keep <laughs> us in Rotary. Really, the first three years are, the, are when it's at risk. And so that's what that second one was. And here, how to get non-Rotarians to show up. Because if we don't get, um, we need more customers and less employees buying our products for us to be successful. Because we just run out of um, people. And that's what's happening. You have to get your message out. Ahead of time. Give people the opportunity to buy the product, not after it's already been shipped. Hey, <laughs> look at that great thing. It's too late for you to be a part of it, but hey, we're going to tell you about it. We're so awesome. Any other learning experiences? All the, I'm going to pick on people, so you better speak up before I pick on you. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, I always do. You haven't been here. Uh, John Bergen. See, I'm not the district governor, so I don't have to be nice. That's why everybody brings me in. They let Alex say as it is, and you'll say, oh, oh we're sorry. That's why Dave's not here. <laughs> yeah, you won't get it. it yeah, you Alex. Just you just... session two all the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, anyway, Julie knows me behind doors. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here quietly, but, uh, yeah, I, I think there are a lot of things that uh, we can learn from what you've presented. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of those implemented. <laughs> right now, you know, we have a uh, project where we're uh, assisting uh, in supplying uh, clothing and medical supplies to Ukraine. And I, I rather suspect we're going to post uh, pictures of what we've done on the web page after it's all over. So, I, you know, your point is very well taken that uh, we need to get that up front. And uh, also, I guess, you know, a lot of what you talk about, um, we haven't even begun. I mean, we have someone working on web, a website and uh, we do have Facebook, but uh, all of the rest of those interactive um, possibilities, I think are pretty much ignored by the club at this point. So we have a lot of work to do here. We do have a, a membership uh, committee and we've talked about uh, the fact uh, that service is the key but I think we need to focus more on how we present our, our service to the community. We did, we did, I think, a very good job with uh, Pints for Polio. We did get the local radio station involved uh, with that. And of course, we had a lot of businesses involved with that. So I think that's one that we did fairly well. But we did not use all of the uh, social media. And I, the nice thing uh, about social media is it's really cheap, if not free. <laughs> and that, that's what's great, because like I said, when you're a poor Rotary Club, you need free or super cheap. But thank you, John. And it, you brought up a good point. The I sign up video. genius thing is, is, is genius. I, you know, I think we definitely can use that for our advantage. It was a high school sophomore that 
told me about it. She's now graduated college, but it was an interactor that told me about it. Like, this is awesome. This is genius. But Pints for Polio, I don't know if this is what your club did, but that's a perfect example. If you remember, I talked about that being a, a product of a Rotary Club. Because, you know, Pints for Polio is basically fundraising for the Rotary Foundation. Well, there's a lot more money outside your Rotary Club than there is in. Usually we use our fundraisers to write checks. If we use our fundraisers to raise money for our own nonprofit, can you imagine how much money and how much good? You know, because I truly think the Rotary Foundation is the greatest found, greatest nonprofit in the world. And it, but we don't put our money with that brag. And that's really confusing. There's a, a business saying, you know, confuse you lose. When somebody walks into a Rotary Club and what they hear about are great club meetings and speakers, and then we fundraise for everybody else except for our own nonprofit, it's really confusing. But I think if we pitch our service and fundraise for our nonprofit, I think that's really going to resonate with people because our nonprofit is just amazing. So if you take like a Pints for Polio, we'll get the public to show up. You know, there's yeah, we, more money there than within your club, and you you would blow out all your foundation numbers that way. We, That's how we, our little club that did not write checks were number one in our district in per capita giving to the annual fund and polio because we got the public to do it instead of our members. Yep, that that's the beauty of the pints for polio as we organized it. It it really was funds from the community. Obviously, the Rotarians participated as well, uh, but uh, we and had they're part of the community, so it makes sense. We had great participation from all the community. But we need to. We need if we do that for the Rotary Foundation, wow, the good we could do would be unreal. Anybody else? Any learning experience? I picked on John, so you know I'm not shy. But actually, we're done. We can't. I have to turn it over to the boss woman. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you, Alex. I. Um, this has been an awesome series. We appreciate uh, your knowledge and expertise, and um, you are a very entertaining um, host. So thank you so much. Um, I, and I want to thank our, our folks who joined us from 6220. I also really want to thank Marissa and Ashley who have joined us from La Crosse and Megs who has joined us from 3850, the Philippines. Wow. You, you've made it an international event. So thank you so much. International. Well, Texas um, used to be its own country. So I was, I'm kind of pseudo on that. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thanks, Julia. <laughs> you mean you mean Texas is not still a foreign country? Kind of, I've been here a long time. I kind of not going to disagree with you there. <laughs> All right. So next Thursday at five uh, p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, our first our sixty two twenty first Thursday event will feature the topic of public image and leveraging social media. Um, and the different platforms that we've talked about, how you can leverage them, who are the audiences, and what are the messages that you want to use on those um, social media platforms. Um, Kyle Hogan, who is Alex's colleague at our zone level, will be joining us with his crew. Um, and this is an event that is open to um, any of the clubs in, in the zone. So in the two zones, well, 25B and 29. Um, so please check your emails for that. Uh, if you're not in our district for that information, um, it's going to be a big event. So um, that it, that's going to be awesome. And I also have to plug uh, Tricon 2023, which is our district conference with district 6220, 6250, and 6270 in the beautiful lacrosse. Marissa and Ashley will see you there. Um, and that is going to be April 28th and 29th. We have a really, really great conference plan this year. Um, so thank you all. Julia, do you have anything you want to add as our uh, district governor elect? Yeah, just let's give um, Alex just a really last round of applause for all the work he's done for the last three weeks. We so much appreciate you helping us 
look at new ideas that we can use in our club and and you're full of them so we always appreciate you so welcome back anytime i you know i owe you a, at least two old fashions now <laughs> did you just say i was full of it or i'm full of them which was <laughs> I, you can take it as you wish. <laughs> use I'm it. Both, I mean, know. that's what Rotary does. You use it. Use the information you got. See what she said. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for having me, everybody. It's been a pleasure. I love your district. I've got so many friends in your district, so I appreciate this. All right. Good night, everyone. Great. Thank Thanks you for all. being here. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Thanks, Nance. Bye. 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 -bye.